What's up with it, bro? What up with it? What happened? Nothing much. Introduce yourself and people know who you are. Well, shit, if they don't already know, it's your homeboy, Ghost314, Mr. Oh! Himself, you know what I'm saying? If we hear views from the arts, man, you know how we getting it in. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you just for coming through fucking with me, man. Hey, I appreciate, hey, homie. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate, hey, shit. If it wasn't for you and our mutual partner, you know what I'm saying? Like, it probably wouldn't have happened the way it did. So, shit, I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first time I asked, I've been seeing your page, seeing you over, um, over a year or so I've been doing this, yeah. but first time I ever ran into you, like, in person, was at the Gorilla Zoe show, out there at Hollywood. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, of course, you probably didn't know who I was. The dig that. And you probably <laughs> like to be keeping it that way sometimes. Yeah. I feel you, homie, I feel you, I feel you, I'm with it. You was performing then at the show. Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah. And that was, a, that was a dope show, man. Shout out to the homeboy, Holly Lou. Shout out to the homegirl, Indy Red. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the old boy Gorilla Zoe. You know what I mean? That shit, that was cool, little gig. Yeah. Was that like the first show you ever opened up for, I guess, uh, a mainstream artist in the Oh, space? hell no. Oh, shit. Like, homie, I've been doing this shit, bro. I've been doing this shit for a long time, bro. So, like, you know, no cap. Like, shit, oh, man, Twister, Pretty Ricky, motherfucking Lil Wayne, 2 Chains. Motherfucking, like, bro, it's, it, hey, like, homie, I've been doing this a long time, man, you know what I'm saying? So, shit, I done ran across a lot of motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? I ran across a lot of opportunities, like, that's, that's like me asking you, how many rappers have you, you know what I'm saying, have you interviewed, <laughs> yeah, bro, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you be like, man, I, nigga, I didn't, yeah, a I thousand, even. I couldn't even, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of, like, low-key, it's kind of one of them things, bro, like, I done always been quietly stomping and quietly grinding for mm -hmm. a lot of years, so... Like shit, it, it really ain't nothing new to me and it ain't nothing new to my mental, you know what I'm saying? So I don't even really put too much, you know, I could compile a list, I guess, if I was absolutely forced. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still finna be missing a lot of that, you feel me? Yeah. Hey, you say you've been at this for, you know, for some years now. Yeah, yeah. I see you recently posted your, um, the Spotify, the highlights yeah. of 2021. Yeah. Yeah, how did you feel about the numbers? Like, just for, yeah, I guess you did, you did pretty good for my Oh, uh, for, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like any true artist, they ain't, they should never be really, you know what I'm saying, satisfied with any number or any level. They, should, you know, you should always strive to go higher and strive to do more. Um, but for me, for what it was worth, you know what I'm saying, out the gate, you know, fresh from the joint, you know what I'm saying, drop a single and it start, you know, it start doing that type of thing organically, word of mouth, with no, you know what I'm saying, for real push. So, I mean, I couldn't be mad at it. You know what I'm saying? So. Now, you just go back to the drawing board. This is what I did to get them numbers. So now let me elevate and, you know what I'm saying, just go above and beyond and shit. Maybe the next year they're going to be triple. And that shit, that's just how I look at it. But it's, it's definitely a solid starting point. And, um, you know, I appreciate everybody that streamed it, everybody that's continuing to stream it. And shit, I guarantee they finna hear it a whole, whole lot more on a bigger platform real, real soon. Yeah, yeah. And you said the thing was that um, work? Yeah, work yeah. Song? yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And shit is is going, hey, on some real shit. It's going, it's going a little stupid in the club. Shout yeah, out to yeah. the homeboy DJ Snow. Shout out to the homegirl DJ Karma. Shout out to the homeboy DJ Three. Uh, uh, man, DJ Stu. Like it's it's so many. It's a lot of DJs that I could be naming right now that that didn't just put their hands on this record. You know what I'm saying? So I got a lot of good people uh, on my team that really want me to win. And shit, I got the product to be able to win. So like like shit. We finna dish this shit to the street, nigga. Like shit, that's just what it is and shit. We, we dishing it. Mm -hmm. And we gonna keep dishing. Okay. That's what it is, bro. I seen like people in Kansas City, they actually fucking with it also. Yeah, um, shout out to the homeboy Jordan Bomb Star. He the producer of the record, man. Hey, my brother from the white mother, you know what I'm saying? That's my homeboy. Um, he lives in KC. So, you know, I had a little you know, I had a, a time frame here to where it was like motherfuckers here was acting like they ain't wanna they ain't want to rock with me, so, you know, the type of nigga I just am by nature will, you know, I could either slap you or just move around, and, you know, I just choose to move around, so, um, I hollered at Jordan, he was like, hey, we got a studio up here in KC, so, should I literally start making that drive, yeah. you know what I'm saying, back and forth, hooked up with the homeboy Mab, um, Mab KC, and shit, we start banging out work, we start banging out product, you know what I'm saying, and I just come back, packaged it up, just like the dope game, bro, out to the street, <laughs> so, it's like, uh, you know, I was also in the penitentiary up that way too, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, I am who I say I am in real life. So, you know, 
I'm gonna get, you know, Kansas City fuck with me because mm -hmm. I was locked up with a lot of them, you know what I mean? And they know me, so, you know, it all come together, man. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, hey, I'm just fortunate, homie. Like, shit, ain't nothing else I can really say about it. Yeah. And you say you did time in Kansas City, I think you yeah. did like, what, close to 10 years? Yeah, close to, man, yeah. eight years, four months, two weeks in a day. Uh -huh. And since you know all that information, that means you already looked up my Casper. So <laughs> just let these people know that when you looked up my Casper, you still ain't seen no hidden uh, freaky DRs and uh, disciplinary reports and none of that crazy shit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I am who I say I am, bro, so it's like, you know, my charges is what they was, armed robbery, kidnapping, motherfuckers that know me know it. And shit, I went and did my time like a man. You know what I'm saying? You ain't find no paperwork on me. You ain't find none of that crazy shit. You know, I went and did my time, stood on my 10, did what I had to do. Never never ducked wreck when it was time for wreck. You know, never ducked the fade, never ducked the knife fight. And shit, you going about your business. You know what I'm saying? You just try to do the best you can to survive mentally most, you know, for the most part. Because that's a long stretch. I was just going to like, how was that on your mind being away from, I guess, from the streets and being in that type of atmosphere shit i mean the atmosphere in itself the atmosphere in itself didn't bother me because i'm you know what i'm saying i'm from her so you know what i'm saying it ain't you know it ain't too much different than nothing else i didn't experience before but it's just the the closeness and the proximity and the frequency that you're going to experience it because in a joint you finna see this nigga tomorrow you finna see him later on a child but if i if if i get into it with a nigga in the city you know, I might not see that nigga for a couple months or something because, you know, it's the entire city. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the joint, you finna see this nigga tomorrow. You know, mm -hmm. you finna see this nigga at canteen. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it just was what it was, man. Like, it's... Shit, you, you, shit, you either finna fold or you shit. You finna be the nigga that do the fold, you know? You, you know, you just gotta... You grit that shit out, homie. It just was what it was. I lost my daddy in there, closest nigga to me. Uh, you know? I mean, it's just one of them situations where you gotta grit it out. Mm -hmm. But I kept, I had a plan in my head for this rap shit. And motherfuckers that know me, they tell you like, hey, this nigga always told us he was gonna get out and do that shit no matter how crazy it sounded to a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just kept my mind focused. I developed my plan. And shit, when I touched the bricks, I followed through and I'm, I'm continuing to execute this motherfucker. And shit, it ain't really, if you a real nigga, it ain't really too much about it you can't like. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got nobody pushing me. I ain't got no backers. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no team. I ain't got no squad. You just you see, on the hey, you see who I showed up with for real? You know what I'm saying? So I don't, you know, I don't need to do all that old other extra and goofy shit. I just got a bunch of people that love me and they want me to win. And I work hard as a motherfucker. And shit, a lot of these motherfuckers I come across, I outperform them and I outwrap them. Shit, I show up on time to interviews. I, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, really? It, it did that. You know what I'm saying? It's like. You know, I, I you, you know shit like that always gonna come up in interviews, bro. Cause it's like it be little shit like that that separates one artist from another, yep. or one artist from a group of fifty, or one artist from a group of a hundred. You know what I'm saying? And the more the more times you can find ways to separate yourself and continue to separate yourself, now you in the upper percentile. And I've known since I was nine years old, I was a, a fly ass upper percentile ass nigga. So if that's what I feel and that's how I move anyway, well shit. That's how I'm gonna keep moving, and that's just what I do. Most definitely. Now, since you came home, you didn't you guys get got um, recognition for your talent. Shit, for when I think you won Battle Rapper of the Year. I did. Uh, shout out to the homeboy Tweezy and the uh, uh, Yours Awards. Uh -huh. um, yeah, man. Last year. Breakout artist also. Yeah, man. yeah. Uh, won Breakout Artist of the Year, Battle Rapper of the Year, and I hadn't even really battle rap for a long time, man. Mm -hmm. But you know, motherfuckers just kind of knew you know, what I can do lyrically and what I have done lyrically and I come from a battle background. So it was just kind of like, you know, for some people, one of the things like, hey, if this motherfucker did start battling again, he was, you know what I mean? And, but that's them saying that, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Like this ain't, that's like, that was street voting. That was fan voting. You right. know what I'm saying? It ain't got shit to do with me. That's the fan saying that, hey, he break out artist of the year. This nigga came home from the joint, dropped his first song and within 60 days, it was on 104.1. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, motherfuckers can really say what they want, man, but you can't argue with results. You know what I'm saying? And I done started popping fast since I've been home. But I had 10 years sitting in that motherfucking cage to devise a plan. And I got the discipline and, you know what I'm saying, resolve to follow that motherfucker through, bro. I don't fuck with sucker shit. I don't chase the pussy. I don't chase these bitches. You know what I'm saying? I chase this dream. I chase this bag. 
I chase studio time. You know what I'm saying? I chase a videographer to get some new visuals. Yeah, shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, Push. I chase people like you to get interviews. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm, I'm on a different chase than a lot of these other niggas. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I keep it pushing, bro. Straight up. Yeah, yeah. Now, your haircut. <laughs> yeah. So St. Louis, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. And this ain't even a, a all the way top, you know, top notch fresh one, man. But, you know, Cardinal Bird, man. Shout out to Homeboy Cheese, Stay Fresh Barbershop, man. Right there on West Florida City and um, Lucas and Hunt, man. Go in there, tell them go since oh, yeah, you got oh, you. Oh, yeah. I just went to my son. I took my son now. Oh, well, shit. Oh, exactly. Hey, my guy way in the back. That's my homie. You know, yeah. Homeboy Cheese, man. But, uh, yeah, man. Like, this, my hurt, like, Motherfuckers who knew me in the joint, they tell you. Like, I was one of the only niggas, well, the only nigga in the penitentiary walking around with music notes cutting his head and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I stayed getting rolled up by a lieutenant, you know, trying to say that, you know, I was going against the rules of uniformity within the, but, you know, it would never stick. It wasn't nothing gang related, it wasn't nothing violent. Like, I just wanted a way to separate myself from everybody else. We all got on blue pants, blue shirt. That's what we got to wear. Right, right. But I've been different. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been a different breed of nigga. I've been cut from a different cloth. So, shit, I'm finna make my own motherfucking cloth. And that's, that, hey, that's just how I move with everything, bro. So, shit, I started it in the penitentiary. And then when I came home, I just like, man, what is some fly shit that I could do? And what do I really like other than music? I love my city. Well, if I love my city, how can I intertwine that shit? And so, shit, I do what I do. Don't give a fuck about what nobody say about it because they don't pay for it. But for the most part, People dig the shit, you know what I'm saying, which is cool. So, you know, I just keep moving with it, bro. And it helps as the conversation starter. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It helps with the marketing, it helps with promo. You know what I mean? So it, it has its business benefits, you know, but for the most part, now I'm a fly nigga. I just want to stay fly. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's what it boiled down to for real, man. Now, are you tapped in to any local St. Louis artists? Like, let's say, I just say the younger generation. Yeah, I fuck with a lot of them, Them, um, you know, I fuck with a lot of the, the younger artists, um, you know, but for the most part, you know, I keep it a thou with you, like, they style of music is different than mine. Uh -huh. Like, the shit that they be talking about, I already did that shit and went to the penitentiary for it, you've already seen my history and my record and my rap sheet for it. Mm -hmm. And I survived 10 years as a St. Louis nigga in Kansas City Prentice, you know what I'm saying? So, I done seen anything that, you know what I'm saying, that these little niggas talking about. So, to me, it don't move me. You know what I'm saying? I'm more impressed with, you know, motherfuckers' vocab and, you know, switching up a rhyme scheme. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, hey, I ain't finna knock what they do. If it worked for every artist got what worked for them. And if that's what worked for them, then that's cool. But I personally ain't finna have it on my conscience that that's what I'm putting out there to my city, to these little homies' ears. Mm -hmm. You know, to these little girls' ears. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not finna be the one. But I can't. I also can't tell another motherfucker not to do it. Cause if that's what that grown man feel he want to do, then that's what he want to do. But I'm just not finna be the one to have that on my conscience. I want to make people feel good and say, hey, this nigga's dope. This nigga got bars. Then I want to make women dance when they hit the club. You know what I'm saying? Anything else, you know, it's irrelevant to me. And you just said something about surviving in a Kansas City penitentiary. Yeah. Is it really that with can like I don't know if like for Kansas City, St. Louis, that's, yeah. that's a big rival. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Like, I ain't you know, I ain't gonna cap and say like every single Kansas City nigga hate every single St. Louis nigga. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I'm walking down that, that walk, you know what I'm saying, when I hit the joint, you know what I'm saying, and, and motherfuckers is whispering and murmuring and you know, they start finding out where you from. You know what I'm saying? You got a few you got a few more eyes looking at you and they looking a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, the tension in whatever room you in or whatever situation you in, it's a little bit thick and you feel it. You know what I'm saying? And then you just might have a motherfucker to tell you flat out, like, hey, we don't normally fuck with St. Louis niggas. Shout out to the homeboy Lil C. Shout out to the homeboy Lil <laughs> Hey, it's like, we don't normally fuck with St. Louis niggas. We fuck with you, though. Yeah, yeah. Hey, shit, I got accepted and honor that. So, yeah. shit, you fuck with me, I'm fucking with you. But if you a real nigga, man, if you... I ain't gonna even say a real nigga, because that's cliche as fuck. But I just say if you move authentically and you just move how you naturally built to move, people gonna always accept that. But I think where niggas get the gang fucked up is where they think they gotta be a gangster or they gotta be a thug. Homie, you ain't gotta do none of that. You just got to be the cool nigga that you is, homie, and keep stepping how you step. 
You that's know what I'm saying? Yeah, bullshit gonna come to you, but that's that's when you exert, you know, your advantages of being a cool nigga. And you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You Heisman pose that old bullshit. And you you keep stepping how you step, but niggas be getting that shit fucked up, and they get the game twisted, man, with that shit. But it's really just all about how you carry yourself, man. Like yeah. I try to show motherfuckers respect times a thousand until I got a reason not to. You know what I'm saying? It's, but then when I got a reason not to, I done gave you several opportunities in between to not only accept the respect that I was giving you, but to, you know, to give a little bit back. And none of that happened. So now you think that just disrespecting or whatever you want to do is running, the, you know, is running the play on me. What shit on me? You got to call the timeout. We finna put your motherfucking ass on the bench and whoever came with you. You know what I'm saying? And shit, that's how I operate, man. I think, um, like you said, just by being a reserved man, like the four is, and I think like people, they think a man gotta be super tough, like you said, you gotta be super tough, so they see a person like you or maybe even me, I deal with that it also as far as just being laid back, like I ain't for all the goofy shit, basically. Nah. But when it comes to the point, like, hold on, man, like, you know, like, you gotta show a motherfucker, like, all right, you, I gave, like you said, I gave you so many opportunities, like, show me that respect, and you keep disrespecting me. Now you said now you got his time out. You hear me? Yeah, like <laughs> hey, they catch the motherfucker off guard. You see, you see the, you see the bitch in the nigga for real. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> like, and, and I'm gonna tell it, and, and, and I'm gonna tell a, a quick little story, uh, just about me and you. Yeah. When I when I hit you up, and then you you know you you told me what you told me, then I hit back like, oh, I ain't know, and then you was like, hey, I interview who I want to interview. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there like. Hey, he said what he said. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like this nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't stand a clown ass nigga that that won't speak his mind. And I ain't saying you gotta be aggressive or nothing like that. But mm -hmm. you a grown motherfucker, man, and you said what you said. Like, this is your platform. You know what I'm saying? And you got the right to run it how you want to and say what you want to say in reference to it. Yeah. And I personally have that understanding. A lot of niggas don't, and then they exactly. take shit personal. Mm -hmm. And then that's another area where I separate myself. I don't get caught up. Like I, un man, it's levels to shit, bro. It's levels to everything you do. It's levels to thinking. It's levels to situations. It's level to this grind. It's level to this rap shit. It's levels to bitches. It's levels to money. It's levels to the street. It's levels to gang shit. You know what I mean? It's it's levels to everything, bro. But you you know if you claim to be a real nigga. You know, certain levels you already equipped to play on that other niggas can't play on. And certain niggas you are, you know, certain shit you already aware of mm -hmm. because certain shit is just common sense to a real nigga. <laughs> or, you know, somebody who move in the right way. Mm -hmm. And shit, I'm one of them niggas. So, mm -hmm. you know, I try to, you know, I try to look at things different. Like the conversation we had before this interview. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I understand. Bro, like I understand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm gonna just go back to what you said about as far as me saying I interview who I um, basically who I choose to interview. Like, yeah. We you said like you said something like oh I'll interview people who just popping. I don't just do that. I get that a lot. I, was, I had somebody write me oh you just interview people who got beef or something like that. I don't, that's not what I no, do. That's I ain't all got you beef see. with nobody. You that's I ain't got beef with nobody. And they just they let me know that's all you looking at. I got I barely got interviews like that. Of course they the most popular you know ones, but. I got tons of interviews outside of that, but that's what people gravitate towards my page for because of those style of interviews. But I say that just to say that when I, it's like it just it's, it's a business aspect. You know the conversation we had in the inbox yeah. is either you know if I choose you then the room. But most people they don't know like, if you just if I'm already if I'm following you or something like that, I'm I already got you on my radar. It just I had a lot going on or something like that, and I'm get to you you know when I get to you something like that. It ain't like. I just have a lot going on, so I ain't too caught up on all this. He got this many followers. He got this many followers, or whatever. I don't care. You have I did people who had a hundred followers, mm -hmm. and I ain't. It's just because I wanted to do it. You. you know, it just and it's seemed. and it seemed like the situation <laughs> you talk about. It seemed like the exact situation of what this was. Like, you know, you was already low key tapped into me already. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because shit on me, like you already know, bro. I've, I've been out here. You know what I'm saying? I've been out here verbal stepping with this shit. You know what I'm saying? I've been out here turf stepping. You know what I'm saying? Like. So, you know, that makes, that does. And then we had to, you know, we had the mutual connect anyway. Yeah. So it was like, a, oh, okay, now it's, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then I understand too that that was a thing on your end, you know, where you was like, okay, it's, here's a, here's another sign. This is, okay, let's, you know what I mean? Let's, and, and I understand that that's a certain level of, you know, I ain't gonna say religiousness, but spirituality, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. 
Like I'm with you, homie. I see you. I see you. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm a different breed out here, bro. Like I get it. I get it. Um, did you catch the verses between Bone Thug and Three Six? I did. Yeah. Um, that shit started off goofy. Um, in the middle it was goofy, and in the end it was goofy. You know <laughs> Why you saying? say that? I mean, I like, caught a little glimpse of it. Of course, you know everybody's showing a little fight scene. Like it was that. dope for the culture. It was dope for the culture, but like you know, just just on some real shit. You know what I'm saying? Busy started it off with some fucked up energy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't know none of you motherfuckers be mocking me. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, get the fuck out of here. Motherfuckers gonna mock you if they want to, bro. Like, right. why would you even put start that off to implant that in their head to mock you, nigga? They gonna, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then you gonna throw a, a water bottle. Like, that's what women do, bro. <laughs> like, if you really got beef with that man, he's standing right there. And they go throw a punch, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, he shouldn't have because it shouldn't have been none of that dumb shit anyway. But he yeah. throwing a water bottle. And then the next thing you know, by the end of the show, everybody hugging and it's kumbaya. And, Hey man, that should be weird to me, bro. Like, what y'all even fighting for anyway? Right, right. Like, this is like this shit silly as hell. You niggas old as fuck doing this shit. I, I ain't. I don't know what they mock. I just seem like course a little glimpse. Man, whatever. these niggas got grandkids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. These niggas up on stage fuck, fight. Man. You know what I'm saying? Somebody sprained the hip and all kind of shit, bro. I'm sure they, they hurt. You know what I'm saying? Day. Like <laughs> that shit was hella goofy. I'm sure they was hurting that. All day. them old niggas was been gayed up. You know what I'm saying? After <laughs> this shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? That shit was goofy as fuck, man. But for the culture itself, musically, it's dope, man. Like, all of these verses that they doing for hip hop and rap specifically, you know what I'm saying? It, to me, it's dope, because it's, it's allowing the culture to come back around with that full circle. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Because this culture always is a revolving circle, man. That's why, like, you know, even fashion, fashion keep coming around. Coogee, Coogee sweaters for men was just three, four years ago again. You know what I'm saying? A few years ago, chicks was back on bell bottom, you know what I'm saying, pants. Like, so mm -hmm. shit gonna come back around. Like that mumble rap shit and all of that, it's already gone for the most part. Now you got people like Jack Harlow, who spits lyrics. Mm -hmm. They coming back around. J. Cole is hot, you know. It, it's coming back around, bro. You know what I'm saying? And shit, me personally, as a lyricist, I'm just trying to be the nigga that positions himself when that shit do spin and it click and it lock. Shit, I'm one of the niggas is focused on. Yeah, yeah. And shit, that's how, you know, I, I try to put myself in some kind of position every day without manipulating the scheme to get there. You know what I'm saying? Because once you do that, you manipulate the scheme to get what you think is a blessing. It's not a true blessing and you ain't going to be able to hold on to it yeah, and keep not, it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you move the right way with something and you move how you supposed to move, and it's authentic and genuine and shit. Doors open. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Opportunities come. Opportunities that the other nigga may not be able to have access to. So you gotta be able to recognize that shit, man, and move a certain way. And then that's when, you know, treating people a certain way. That definitely comes into play. Most definitely. You know what I mean? And if you can understand that, man, and hey, shit's gonna open up for you and it's gonna work. Now, what's um, a miss? His conception, uh -huh. uh, that someone may have you. Um, I heard, uh, I heard that I'm aggressive a lot. Um, I heard that a lot. Um, and it's a misconception because um, I may be aggressive at times. I just think I'm very, very assertive and very direct. You know what I'm saying? Like I say what I think, and I say what I feel. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and if I feel you did some fuck nigga shit. I'm not just finna fly off the handle, I'm finna ask you in detail so I can have a better understanding. Mm -hmm. Because, like for instance, let's say somebody do something and say something. My brain is already going, like, hold on. Like, was this nigga trying to da 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 But instead of, like, the average nigga just finna hold that in, you know what I'm saying, and next thing you know, still and keep still fucking with that nigga, but I'm the type, hey bro, let me holler at you, homie. Hey bro, um... I could be tripping, bro. Stop me if I'm wrong, man. But when you said, duh, 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 this is how I took it. Am I wrong in taking it that way? But now, I, the way I operate now, I look at it as if you really do have an issue, that's your moment to let it be known. Right. And then if you say, no, nah, bro, I didn't mean it like that, duh, 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 that's how I'm going to take it. I'm going to give you that benefit of the doubt. So now if that same issue come back up again, now that's when I got to approach different because I gave you that opportunity. Sure you dig what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So now I gotta come at you. Hey, nigga, what's up, fuck, nigga? Like, homeboy, <laughs> when I hollered at you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't holler at you as a man, bro. Man. man to man, we was talking. You said it wasn't no issue. 
Now you got to handle things a different way. Yeah. Because now I see that if it happened once where I thought it was over, well, now I got to nip that shit in the bud and pull that fucking weed out and plug the hole up in the dirt. <laughs> then pour some cement over it. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes that's just how you got to move. And if a motherfucker's not built like that and they're not conditioned like that, they don't understand that. So therefore, you know, they feel to have a misconception of what it is and what they seeing and what they hearing. Mm -hmm. No, nah, you just seeing a nigga that's about his business and a grown man and I'ma talk to you straight up like a grown man. And I'ma talk to you respectfully like a grown man. You just ain't used to niggas that move that way. Mm -hmm. You used to niggas that tuck their tail and that's why you don't understand it. That's why I'm weird to you. That's why I'm different to you. And I, <laughs> But I get that. But you ain't the type of nigga that, you know, because I know what's up. Uh -huh. So... You move around, I'm gonna move around. It's one of the two finna happen. Real shit, real shit. I went through a situation like that. I don't talk about it on camera. I'll talk to you after that. All right. All right. <laughs> See, we friends now. We friends now, Jay. We friends now, homie. You know what I'm saying? We partners now. Yeah, yeah. I'll be over there for us, uh, Sunday dinner. Oh, shit. It's all good, bro. Well, coming to a closing here, do you have any last things you'd like to share? Yeah, man. Uh, Off the rip. You know, just again, man, I, you know, I appreciate you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate this opportunity. Appreciate the blessings. Shout out to my homegirl, Indy. Shout out to my homeboy, DJ3, DJ Snow, the whole May music group team, Malik the King. Uh, shit, my homeboy, Hazy P, my whole boy, Zoe Van Gogh, my homeboy, Reno, the homeboy, Ox. Oh, shit, man. Like, hey, bro, like, it's... It's so many, all my niggas still locked up in the penitentiary. Free B, legit, my homeboy, Muggs, my homeboy, Reese. Man, shit, my homeboy Lil C, my homeboy Lil D, my homeboy Double B. Like, homie, it's so many people. Like, hey, it ain't free the gang. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's so many people. You know what I'm saying, homie? I could be naming, bro. Man, but just everybody that for real genuinely fuck with me. Everybody that genuinely fuck with how I move. Everybody that genuinely fuck with how I rock. Everybody that genuinely fuck with my work ethic. My raps, my rhymes, whatever you want to call it. My bars, my flow, my songs. Whatever. Every woman that's twerked to this record, every woman that's gonna continue to twerk to this record, like man, just anybody that know they had a hand on pushing me forward, anybody that prayed for a nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, anybody, they know who they is. You know what I'm saying? I know who they is when I see them. You one of them now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't be sitting in this seat without you. I mean, like, I get that. I understand that shit. Yeah, shit. And shit, anybody that's really fucking with me and representing the city the right way, man, and ain't no no goofy shit and no fuck shit. And shit, I'll shout out to all the real niggas, man, all the real bitches. Like shit, it is what it is, man. Yeah. And shout out to your social media handle, let people know they can find you at. Hey, check this out, man. Y'all can find your homeboy at Ghost314, man, right there on the IG. You can hit me up on Facebook, Brandon Long on Facebook. Yeah, I still keep the uh, government name because I ain't got shit to hide. When you're a real nigga, you ain't got shit to hide from nobody. Man, other than that, catch a nigga in traffic, catch a nigga in the streets, or probably somebody grandma house for Sunday dinner. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, this shit, that's how we do it around these parts, bro. Yeah, yeah. But y'all know what it is, man. I appreciate the opportunity. It's your boy Ghost314, Mr. Ugh! Himself, man. Holla.